Hi, my name is Ayesha. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. In today's video, I'm going to be focusing on the smallest room in my house and it's the downstairs toilet, which I'm in now. Uh, you can see there's a few things going on in here. I'll show you how I did it in the video. Don't forget to watch through to the end. That's so important. Um, I think you guys have been helping me out quite a lot. I've seen the hours jumping up. Don't forget to like the video if you like what you see and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and also share with a friend if they need some inspiration. So although this room is the smallest one in the house, it's kind of one of the most important rooms I think as well because when people come in, they're not necessarily gonna go in your bedroom, but they will want to use the loo when they're there, especially if they're there for a few hours, they're gonna want somewhere to relieve themselves. And so they're definitely gonna come in here and you kind of want it to be the room that kind of sets the tone for the house, makes people feel welcome, makes people feel inspired as well. and. Um, um, also, what I don't want is for people to like feel like they need to rush in here as well. So I've put something interesting on the wall. I've got like a little quote on the wall. There's a quote behind there. They can look at the decor and people do because in my um, flat, especially um, people will be like, oh, you got that in your bathroom or oh, you've got that in your bathroom. So you can tell that people are looking at things while they're in there and um, it needs to smell right. It needs to look right. The products that you give them to wash their hands with or use as lotion, I think it should be like a nice little treat for them. So that's my aim in this room which is why I decided that I was going to go for panelling in this room as well because it instantly gives like just something else to the space. You can see from the before and the after that there's a whole different tone, a whole different vibe going in here now just because I've added something like this. Even when I just put this on without painting it, it made such a difference to the space and I think I showed a little video clip on Instagram as well so some of you will have seen that. Um, so yeah, it just makes it more interesting, more homey, more comforting. And so if you want to do something like this in your house, then it's actually quite easy to do. These were the colours that I originally chose. The Egyptian cotton was the one that I decided was too dark and the bottom was the overtly olive, which is the same one, but it looks a bit different. So just quickly, my main complaint about persimmon would be the finishing off. The guy who paints just paints over anything. You can see like that's not done properly. And in the living room, the one behind the radiator there was just a massive hole and he just painted it and didn't tell anyone there was a hole there. This is the product that I've used to um, put on the back of the tongue and groove boards so that I can attach them to the wall. It's quite good, it works quite quickly and it seems to have done the job just fine as well. I've not used this one before, um, but yeah, it's quite good. And then you just need one of those guns to kind of apply it. You uh, cut the lid off and then you cut the top of this off and then you can put it in the gun thing and um, squeeze it. It didn't come up properly when I was doing the time lapse. It was too quick. So I'll just quickly show you how I've applied. So a little bit on the edges, making sure the edges get done quite well. This is quite awkward to do with a, a phone in your hand. But yeah, along all of the edges. And then bits in the middle as well. probably a bit much but hey um doing it with one hand is not easy and then you don't do that because you will have two hands um so now i'm gonna have to clean all of that off um but basically you slot it in and you make sure it fits nice and flush so that there's no gap in here um, so I've still got a bit to do on the top there, it just slots in. You can use a mallet to um, bang them together and make sure they're properly tight, but um, I don't have a mallet, I just have a normal um, hammer. These balls are spruce and so they're quite delicate, so if you do use a hammer you're going to probably damage them, so definitely a mallet, which is like a rubber top or like a wooden top, so that it's the same material and it's not too hard for it. Um, yep, yeah, I'm just going to clean off these bits because that should not be there, it won't happen if you apply it with both hands and you don't put too much on, it shouldn't spill out at all. Um, and uh, make sure if you do get it on your hands, then you wash them because uh, again, chemicals and stuff, I probably should be wearing gloves really, but I just, I don't like gloves. Um, 
but I do wear them with certain things that I use. So yeah, I'm just gonna wash my hands straight away. So here I'm just using that same method I just showed you to attach the boards. I started in one corner and worked my way around in each direction. Press down firmly on each board as you apply them. Mark out and cut the boards wherever you need to so that they can go around the different fixtures like the sink, the radiator and the toilet. I used a jigsaw to do the rounded cuts and I used a table saw to cut the boards in half where I needed to in the corners but you could also use a jigsaw for that as well. This is the current state of things. So I've cut all of the bits. There's a few bits that I'm not quite happy with. So like this bit here, I couldn't slide it in without cutting a bit extra off. So I'll probably try and fill that uh, with a few scraps afterwards. Um, this area is fine because obviously the radiator is gonna go over there. So there's no point in me doing all of that. And I've just got the back of the toilet to do that side and a little bit here. In this corner, I don't know if you could see on the video or on the time lapse, but I just basically cut this in half. Um, well, not in half. I measured here, then cut, and um, I put a piece on that wall, piece on that, and then I've just put filler in between. So it should end up being okay. And I'll do that for the other bits that I may need doing. So this colour, again, you can't see properly on camera, but it's looking better um, later in the evening. So it's quite nice now but because it doesn't look so good in the day it's a bit too dark for the daytime um this is coming up darker than what it is it's, it's lighter than that in real life but it's still a bit too um dark in the daytime so i'm going to switch it for a lighter shade the other thing is that here i've got the um pedal stool i think it's called or whatever that bit that goes on there so i didn't go right into the corners um it's good to be able to access the pipes, I guess, properly, and it's a bit unnecessary because no one's going to see it. Um, if when I put it back on, you can still see it a bit, I might add a few little bits here and there, but I think it should be okay how I've done it. So this is where it's at. I've put this Astragar, um like beading around. So all I've got to do now is just fill these bits and sand them down um, and I'm going to do the skating board at the same time as well. So this is what I usually use to uh, fill gaps and stuff so I'm just gonna use some of that. So I'm just using my finger to fill the gaps so wherever there's a bit of a crease um, and wherever there are the hole marks from where the nails went in when the um, skirting boards went back on just going to fill that obviously you're going to be left with raised bits afterwards so it's just about getting um some sandpaper and sanding everything down so it's nice and smooth um so that you get a good finish on the wood i'm probably not gonna get too much of a good finish unless i sand everything down because the way they've painted isn't that great so you can see like brush marks and things so I'll give it a light sand, but nothing too drastic. So yeah, just wherever there's a hole or a bit of a gap, then you can fill it. It's the same with these. So where I've joined bits together, I'm just gonna go along and just spread a line of filler in there. So like this one is um, still raised. So you could uh, hammer that nail in a bit more so that it sits in so that you can actually fill the gap. So as you can see, I've put filler everywhere and um, I just tried to put the um, little pedestal bit back and I realised you can still see a little bit there. So tomorrow I'll cut one more bit to go on that side and that should be fine. And I was going to paint this tonight, but you know what? I'm so tired. So I think all the painting is going to get done tomorrow, which is annoying. It's going to be a long day, but um, it's better than struggling tonight and not doing it properly. 
make sure you leave the filler to dry according to the instructions and then you can take some sandpaper or glass paper and you can just sand everything down so that it's nice and smooth. This is a stage you kind of really need to get right so that you can get as perfect a finish as possible because you will still see raised bits if you don't get all of them sanded down. <music> at the stage where I've primed the bottom I'm just doing one coat and there's two coats of this white cotton colour on the wall so once this is dry enough I'm going to put the actual colour on. Make sure you push the paint into the grooves properly so that you don't have any gaps afterwards. As the paint dries look out for drips and brush them in if you need to because you don't want to be left with raised bits at the end. So this is where things are currently at. Um, you can't really tell the difference between the colours, um, but that's supposed to be white cotton. That's brilliant white. And then we've got the overtly olive on the um, tongue groove board. So it's currently at that stage. And all I need to do now is um, put some um, cork here and also around the toilet as well. I did add another bit down there to the um, panelling because when I put the radiator on it's fine from this angle when you're looking by the door but then when you stand up or when you sit down you can kind of see it a bit more and so um, uh, the gap there was noticeable so I just um, took a bit of the scraps and filled it and it's a bit better now. from the range which is I've never really heard of it before because there was never one where I've been living but it's kind of okay there are some things that look a little bit tacky but you can pick up a few good things as well they had this one which is the larger one and then they had a smaller like gray kind of colored one as well it was only about 17 18 pounds or so so that was quite a good find I didn't want to do just like wall art or um something in a frame I wanted something a little bit different Okay, so this mirror here is from Sainsbury's Home. I just picked it up when I was shopping one day. I have had it for quite a while, so I don't think they are necessarily selling it now. I know I did see them come back again, but um, yeah, it was a while ago and they may not be selling it. I think it was around 20 pounds and um, it's really nice. It was hanging in the middle bedroom in my old house. So yeah, it's definitely not new, which is good. I get to reuse something. It's not quite what I want, although I like it. It's too narrow for the space. And so it looks a bit odd at the moment. Um, if you wanted to get something similar, B&M do have one that's kind of similar to this. The only difference is it's just one solid mirror. There's not the two different bits and it doesn't look as expensive as this one looks. Not that this looks particularly expensive, but sometimes I find with B&M they do have good things, but actually sometimes their stuff can look a little bit tacky. And with the mirror that I saw today, it was nice that it was a bit wider, but it looked a little bit on the cheap side. It is cheap, but sometimes you can find things that are cheap and still look quite nice. 
what I do want to get for this, so this is not staying, I'm just going to put that there for now. I want to get one of those mirrors that have like the shelf in it so that I can put um, the little dispenser bottles on and have the sink area be a little bit more um, free and clear. If people are washing their hands and the dispenser bottles are right there, they're just going to be splashing onto that and then I'm going to have to be cleaning them all the time. Okay, so this right here is something that my sister does in her house. So I've kind of stolen the idea. I think she did actually steal it from a friend. But the idea is that when people come over, they're going to be using a hand towel to wash their hands. And then the germs are just still going to be in the towel. And so it's not very nice to then come behind someone else and then use a wet towel if you're having like a function of something. So the idea is that everyone, when you wash your hands, you just use one of these and then it gets chucked into the little bin down there and then they all get washed so it's much more hygienic if you're having people round um it does mean that obviously you've got to get lots of these um to accommodate the people that are going to be there and using them but it's more hygienic and it's a nice little touch i think people will feel a bit more special when they come round and they've got their own little you know hand towel that they can then use and then um it's, it's better so this frame is another one from Ikea, it's the same as the ones that are on uh, By My Piano and this print is one of the prints that I got from Avista, Avista Prints. I'll put the 10% off code in my description below this video so that if you want to order some prints from them then you can but there's that one and this is another one that I ordered as well but um, I think people want things to read when they come into the toilet so I'm going to put that on there. These little dispenser bottles I got from think oh there we go done elm um but i spray painted the tops of them so that they were gold um i did try and swap them out for gold um tops that were on a different bottle but they didn't fit they didn't they weren't the right diameter and so they didn't screw on properly this bin for the used hand towels to go in is just from amazon and this is also from amazon as well again if people come in they bring their phone or they have something like a little bag or something or products that they want to put on there just while they're using the loo then they can do that just in terms of attaching things to walls i did just screw it into here um i figured that this is seven and a half millimeters then plasterboard behind it is another sort of 12 millimeters or nine millimeters and so i just screwed into this um, because I shouldn't hit any pipes or anything but if you are putting something in a similar place then um, just think about the length of the screws and what is behind this wall as well. So these are the last little bits and these three monkeys that speak no evil, hear no evil, see no evil, they are from TK Maxx. This planter is from a local garden centre uh, but I think actually I saw them somewhere else and it was cheaper like way cheaper but they didn't have the same colour so um, look out for those. Um, this is from Dunelm as well I think um, but again I'm trying to switch my diffusers and stuff out um, and I'll be using my homemade ones in the future but it's quite nice that it comes in the amber glass and then I just have a little quote here as well which is just random it was from my house. Um, I put it there to kind of make it be a bit more homey while I was settling in. So this flooring I've linked in a previous video, it is engineered um, wood flooring. So it's not vinyl or anything like that. It's a layer of real wood sandwiched between lots of other things. Um, and it's suitable for wet rooms that are like maybe a toilet like this and a kitchen, but not good for the bathroom. Uh, but it's quite nice because the wood is real and um, even if you like chip it or like damage it a bit it's the same as wood so you can sand things down you can stain them again and so on so it should be quite long lasting and it comes with I think it's a 25 year guarantee so that's quite a good guarantee if you install it in the right way and if you look after it properly then you get your 25 years. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of if you are going to attempt a project like this. The first thing is that it's actually quite achievable to DIY something like this. So it's just wood, it's cut to the same length, and then it's the only tricky bits is going around like the toilet and the sink, and also behind the radiators as well, just making sure you try and get everything as tight as possible. Um, so yeah, it's quite good. You could get it done in like a weekend. So with these boards, I actually chose to use real wood, and so you can still see like the texture on them. Only downside to that is that actually they were quite rough and I didn't even think to sand the actual boards down. I sanded a bit where the joins were and where I'd put filler, but I didn't actually sand the actual boards down. And if I'd done that, then I probably would have got a much smoother finish. 
also in terms of filling and sanding you've got to do it properly otherwise you can tell like where the joins are it's not as good as it could be if i'd spent more time on it so yeah that's the key thing to be aware of is that you know if you finish it properly if you're gonna sand then sand properly if you're gonna fill then fill properly and um make sure you're following the instructions on the filler that you buy and the glues that you buy and things like that though i used spruce which is real wood and so you can see the grain if you want a more finished look then you can actually just use mdf and um, it's going to be smoother you won't necessarily get the grain coming through but it will be smoother and you'll have less sanding also it might be a little bit cheaper if it's mdf because mdf is just like dust glued together and so it's a bit cheaper because it's recycled so yeah that's an alternative if you want the properly polished look but again i'm trying to blend old and new i quite like the idea of being able to see the boards and add that texture in as well so just depends on what you like i didn't actually use nails to attach the tongue and groove boards to the wall i only used the adhesive that i showed in the video the glue is very strong it was quite quick to set and I don't think it's a problem to be fair it's firmly attached to the wall I don't think it's coming off anytime soon this part here is I think it's called astra astragar or something like that I didn't get the right thing because it's not the right depth and so it didn't properly sit on top of here and which is why I had to fill a bit more what I should have done is these are actually seven and a half millimeters thick and so I should have got something that was going to be able to sit on it and be seven and a half millimeters thick so what I did is I kind of tilted it a bit so that top part is attached to the wall there and this part is attached to the boards here but it's like at an angle and so that's not ideal it's not like there's there's no issue it's i used the same adhesive to attach this and it's firmly on there but i would have liked to have done it better and it would have meant less filling in as well okay so about the paint then this actually was painted and i painted it white cotton which i think i said in the video but you can tell it just looks the same as the white if i look up where the ceiling joins the wall it doesn't look like i've done anything so it was a bit of a waste of time i did start off with a color that was darker but i think what the problem was is not that i didn't like it in the daytime it was that it didn't match the green that i chose i think was the problem so it kind of looked off I would have liked something a bit more interesting on this but actually the plan is to put wallpaper there anyway so by the time i get wallpaper and get a blind it should be more interesting in this room anyway so and then we'll see if this stays if it doesn't match with the wallpaper that i choose then that will have to go also in terms of the paint this was just normal matte paint um it was dulux white cotton and then this one was a dulux color called overtly olive but i had to get it mixed because i wanted satin and they didn't have well they didn't have any versions of that color there so i got it mixed so this is valspar paint satin and the reason why i got satin is because obviously by the sink area it's um water can splash on it and so i wanted it to be something that was a bit more cleanable um i was going to go for gloss instead of satin but in the end like i didn't want it to be too shiny and i can't just do the bit by the sink gloss and then the rest satin and so i just went everything satin and um i think it should be fine no one really uses this room it's only if like people come over then they'll just go in like how many times can you go to the toilet when you're visiting someone's house you don't really go that often so there shouldn't be too much splashing and there shouldn't be too much to sort of wipe down i do still need to do the caulking in here though i didn't show that on the video i was gonna do it but then i forgot and then honestly i just wanted to get the video done so around the sink area i'm gonna do see-through cork because um, I don't want to see the white line around the sink so I'm going to do that see-through and then by the toilet I'm going to do it white because the gap is a little bit wider and so if it's see-through you can still see the gap so whereas if it's white it will close that gap so I think that's a bit better um, behind the toilet so I've still got that to do um, that's pretty simple to do shouldn't take too long um, but yeah <laughs> just not today so there's still a few bits that I'm going to add to this room. There's not going to be a part two because I don't think the bits that I need to add are particularly interesting. So um, on the wall in the corner, I just want to put some shelves, but I can't find the right size to fit the space. So I probably might have to DIY something. Um, and so I can put my cleaning products and things on there. It's good not to have them low. Uh, like my sister has children. Um, some of my friends have children. And so you don't want bleach lying on the floor where they can just easily grab it. So it needs to go on a shelf, like in a container or something. Um, um, so I'll do that for the corner 
Also, as I said, I'm going to switch the mirror out for something that's a bit wider and something that has a shelf on it. And I think I might put something else in a frame in here as well. But those things are minor and I'll probably post pictures of it on Instagram as and when I do do that. So that's pretty much it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, share with a friend if you think they might like it as well. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Leave me a comment as well. Let me know what you think of it. And you take care of yourself. I will see you in the next video. Bye.